So, in this video, I want to give you a very simple, very easy way for you to begin to understand submodalities. Uh, the, the things I'm going to share with you today, I mean, they're so duh, they're so obvious. Uh, you already do them, you already know them, uh, but you probably aren't doing them on purpose. So let me tell you what I mean by that. If, you, if, uh, if we look at thinking in general, right, there's only really three ways that people can think. And, and we call these modalities, these three modalities. So you have visual, in other words, mental imagery. The pictures or mental movies that you make. You have your auditory, you know, the self-talk. When you talk to yourself or you remember sounds or you hear sounds internally. And then you have your feelings, that which you feel. Now usually, the feeling is the thing that we become most aware of. Uh, but it's usually the tail end of the caboose, so to speak. It's our thoughts that end up leading to those feelings, our interpretations of the world that produce those feelings. So those are modalities, right? And you could say, Peter, uh, what about smell and taste? And you're right, those are modalities as well. For instance, you can remember a taste and that's a thought. Uh, but for our purposes, the vast majority of the time, we're going to be focusing on these three. Mental imagery, self-talk, and feelings. Now, a submodality, right? So if our modalities are those three things, our submodalities are qualities of a particular modality. So a feeling, for example, will have qualities to the feeling. Self-talk will have qualities. Uh, mental imagery, it's gonna have qualities to it. Now, there are in those qualities, those submodalities of your, your mental imagery, self-talk and feelings, it's in changing those qualities that you begin to have a lot more choice about how you think, how you feel, and how you behave in the world. So let's, let's give you an example of qualities, right? Um, feeling, take a feeling, yeah? So this could be a good feeling, it could be a bad, I don't know why you'd start, start there, but you can. Uh, but every feeling that you have has a location with it, right? You don't get nervous in your pinky finger. It doesn't work that way. So if I asked somebody, I said, how do you, you know, when you're feeling really happy, what's the first thing that you notice in your body that lets you know you feel happy? And then typically, uh, you know, they'll point to it. I just did it on myself, right? When I feel happy, I feel it here first. That's where I first notice the sensation. It's a sensation, a feeling of lightness in my cheeks as they start to rise up, right? That's what happiness feels like first for me. Uh, you know, if you told me, Peter, <laughs> what's it feel like when you feel sad? It's in, that, it's in this area for me. I have other sensations, like if you ask me, you know, what's it like when you feel confident? Well, when I feel confident, it starts lower for me. It starts in, the, in my back and then I feel a lifting sensation up through my chest. Uh, every sensation, every feeling has with it a, a physical location in the body. Now, that's one quality, that's one submodality of feelings, location. Feelings also move. That, uh, you know, that again, I was describing that confidence. There's, it starts in my back, but it lifts up. And, you, and as I feel it, you'll see the shoulders start to drop back. And, but that's because there's a lifting sensation happening. Other people will describe sinking sensations. So feelings can move as well. And, and the feelings moving is part of how they maintain themselves, right? That if, you, if you've ever, like if you take your finger and you tap in one spot over and over and over again, eventually you'll feel nothing because uh, the neurons, the nerve endings in that area of your skin habituate and they'll go numb. Eventually you'll just tune it out, right? In order for you to maintain a feeling, there has to be some movement to it. So that movement can have speed, right? It can have intensity, it can have pressure. The feeling can be heavy or it can be light. These are sub qualities of the feeling. And then if you start to change those, then you can change how you feel, right? Uh, Self-talk, auditory, internal auditory has the same thing. When you, know, you speak to people who have high anxiety, typically the self-talk is rather rapid. It's moving very fast. 
And anybody who has anxiety, you're probably looking at this nodding. You're like, yep, my self-talk is a million miles an hour. And it's anxious, it's in a fearful tone. I, <laughs> I was working with a client uh, the other day who's depressed. And, you know, so I was asking her, I was like, well, how do you do that? You know, and she goes, uh, well, I think, and, and then I'm, I'm not going to do it, but she lists off all these things that honestly aren't that big of a deal. Like she said, you know, not, I'm not a millionaire. I'm not this, I'm not that. Not a big deal not to be a millionaire. It's not it, like it doesn't depress me that I'm not a millionaire, right? But it was more the tone of voice that she uses. And then she stacks them. So she's going, I'm not a millionaire. You know, that the voice tone itself influences her. Um, you know, uh, what's another example of this? Excitement, right? When you're curious about something, you know, when I'm really curious, the tone of my internal dialogue is, whoa, cool. You know, that, oh, right? The tone influences you more than the words do themselves. So those are qualities of internal sound, right? Now, internal imagery, is it a picture or is it a movie? When you think about an event from your past, like a, po a past positive memory, you know, maybe a time when you felt really good or a time when you were the happiest, you know, when you remember that, is it a movie? Is it a still image? Are you looking through your own eyes or are you seeing yourself? Because these things change how you feel. Like if you and I are on a roller coaster and we're about to go over it versus you and I are looking at a picture of ourselves on a roller coaster from far away, one is gonna feel intense and the other isn't, right? Same thought, same exact thought. In fact, as people start to uh, resolve past negative experiences, there's a tendency for them to step out of them and disassociate from them, push them off into the distance. That when people feel good about the past, you know, it's either they're associating to pleasant memories and or pushing off the things that don't feel good. Uh, distance, right? If you're gonna make a mental image, you can bring it closer to you, you can bring it further away. I, I do this experiment with clients. I say, what's your favorite food? Now imagine it far off in the distance and then bring it close to you, put it right underneath your nose. Smell it, right? And then when everyone's salivating, and I tell them now, imagine that that pizza was on a tray and it moved off into the distance, 20, 30 feet. And it's fantastic because everybody will begin to frown. As soon as you ask them to do the exercise, they all go like this, oh, you know? That just by taking the same thought, the thought was pizza, but how they made it, whether it was close or far away, determined how they felt about it. It's not your thoughts themselves that are the issues. It's how you represent them to yourselves. That, you know, one limiting belief is a limiting belief to one person, but not the other because of how they represent it. They've learned to picture or, or say to themselves uh, something about that limiting belief that makes them doubt it or believe it. So some modalities is the beginning. Uh, it's one way. Uh, beginning to influence your state of mind, your belief system, your thinking, your behavior. And it begins to give you a lot more choices over this experience of yours. And there's so many cool applications. All of the timeline work, you have to understand submodalities, really. Well, you don't have to understand it. The practitioner doing it with you needs to understand it. But if you want to do things for yourself, like if you want to be able to do change work on yourself, submodalities, great. Great tool.